Welcome to AATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Sixty year old male patient presented to ER with alleged history of accidental ingestion of car coolant, ethylene glycol. Uh, followed by uh, the day after, uh, the uh, next day, patient came to our ER. Mm. On initial 10 second assessment, the patient was conscious and oriented. On primary survey, airway was appears patent, no secretion, no pooling of secretion, nothing is there. On breathing part, airendry bilateral equal, respiratory rate is 26 breath per minute, saturation 95 percent is on room air. Circulation part, BP is 140, 90 millimeter mercury, heart rate is 86 and all peripheral pulses are palpable. Disability, GCS, E4, V5, M6 and pupils uh, bilaterally equally reacted to light. Exposure, uh, GR base is 100 millidesiliter and temperature was normal sir. Adjunct to uh, primary survey, uh, we take an uh, VBG, VBG showing uh, pH is 7.32, uh, bicarbonate is 6.6, PCO2 is 13.2, lactate is 10.8, creatinine is 1.34, PCO2 PCO2 13.2, patient is metabolic acidosis with uh, respiratory alcohols also. Normal compensation PCO2 in this case is 17 plus or minus 2. Uh, but the AVBG showing by current 6.6 and PCO2 is 13.2, sir. Only thing, respiratory part you should never comment when you are taking a VBG. We don't know what will happen mm. in uh, 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 in uh, CO2 levels when you are taking a VBG. Mm. So better to better not to comment about respiratory part at all. Only mm. if you want to know the acid base status, metabolic status, that will be Good, but compensation of respiratory part may not be fully covered by VBG. Mm. But pH difference is very minimal, so mm. for a practical purpose, this is enough. Uh, and uh, uh, lactate showing uh, ten point eight. Okay. Uh, then uh, we uh, we uh, other adjunct to primary survey taken ECG uh, because patient in history wise patient is telling uh, taken car coolant containing ethylene glycol on its uh, metabolism uh, oxidates is. Uh, uh, producing and it causes uh, bind with calcium causes hypocalcemia. Mm -hmm. So to rule out uh, hypocalcemia findings in ECG, we take an ECG. Uh, there is no any QTC prolongation. It's okay. just normal. Mm, then we uh, what clinical findings it can produce? Uh, ECG findings. Uh, QTC tetany, tetany. Uh, spasm, carpal spasm, okay. tingling sensation. Okay. Uh, then we send uh, other lab test uh, like. Uh, Serum electrolytes, uh, osmolality, uh, serum calcium, uh, protein blood test, RFT, uh, LFT investigation. Uh, then secondary survey. Secondary survey, uh, 60 year old male patient with no known comorbidities. There is no any medication is taking, no any drug allergy. Uh, patient had alleged history of ingestion of uh, car coolant. He thought like it is alcohol. Uh, approximately 150 ml of ethylene glycol is mixed with water and he had taken. Uh, followed by uh, the day after that day, uh, patient had abdominal discomfort. Uh, then he uh, came to our ear. Mm. Mm. Uh, here there is only complaining of abdominal discomfort, uh, no history of vomiting, abdominal pain, uh, altered sensorium, fever, uh, uh, abnormal movements or seizures. Mm. Uh, so this patient does, is admitted with the history of uh, alleged history of uh, some uh, toxic alcohol and admitted with uh, severe metabolic acidosis. acidosis. Okay. High anion gap or uh, normal anion? Uh, high, uh, anion gap is uh, eleven point four sun. Okay, so towards the uh, upper uh, limit upper of limit the then we uh, started uh, treatment, sir. Mm. Uh, we started with IV fluids and initially we want to give uh, uh, alcohol dehydrogenase. Uh, we know that it is ethylene glycol. Uh, uh, it first metabolism is like ethylene glycol. Uh, uh, first uh, uh, enzyme is alcohol dehydrogenase mm. that converted into uh, gly glycol aldehyde. Then next step is uh, aldehyde dehydrogenase converted into glycolic acid. So the glycolic acid is the toxic metabolite 
and the toxic metabolite normally in ethylene glycol causes uh, renal damage mm. uh, that what it is causes uh, uh, alleguria and aneuria mm. uh, mm. does this patient add any of no, these no, things sir, no sir no sir no no there is no history to decrease no. your not put uh, so it is uh, but it is uh, reversible uh, renal damage so we initially uh, uh, normal patient came to here we start with uh, formipresol formipresol is a Uh, first cycle, first enzyme in a, a competitive inhibitor that is uh, aldehyde competitive aldehyde dehydrogenase competitive inhibitor is uh, sorry alcohol dehydrogenase competitive inhibitor is fomipresol fomipresol you can give fomipresol or iv uh, normal or ethanol or oral ethanol okay iv ethanol is very difficult to get you have to prepare it that is not possible to prepare in short time like this uh, then fomipresol uh, doses are Uh, 15 mg per kg uh, loading dose we can give followed by 10 mg per kg uh, iv 12 12 hourly four doses we can give uh, then ideally we will uh, calculate the ethanol concentration uh, we can continue uh, form pesol at the ethanol concentration less than 20 mg per dl uh, but in uh, laboratory ethanol concept specific ethanol test is not uh, possible hmm. so we can we have a qualitative qualitative quantitative not quantitative. present then we can check a uh, urine routine uh, then uh, initially i tell there is formation of oxalates oxalate is the uh, and its glycolic acid convert into glyo glyoxylate glyoxylate and oxalates hmm. metabolites these oxalates bind with calcium formation of calcium oxalates so in we with doubted patient ethylene glycol we can take urine routine and the urine routine showing calcium oxide crystals it is not a diagnostic or confirmatory uh, we can just know that patient taken as in okay. this patient uh, calcium oxide is 4 plus okay here it will be uh, like uh, we know that already it is uh, ethylene glycol, ethylene glycol. Uh, we can only uh, know toxic alcohol by using Uh, your anion gap acidosis Osmo- with osmolar gap. Osmolar gap. Uh, osmolar, uh, gap. Uh, in this osmolar gap, which is the difference between uh, serum osmolality uh, minus the calculated osmolality. Uh, serum osmolality in lab wise it is two eighty nine, and calculated osmolality there is a formula it is two into sodium plus uh, blood. Glucose divided by 18 plus blood urea nitrogen divided by 2.8, mm. and blood urea nitrogen we can get by uh, in this formula is milligram per deciliter. Okay. So urea uh, divided by 2.14 is the blood urea nitrogen. Okay, our uh, this one is urea. In our lab it is uh, urea, urea. To convert to BUN. BUN is. Uh, in in this patient calculated serum osmolality is. Uh, a uh, 285 mm. and difference between lab osmolality and our calculated osmolality is osmolar gap mm. uh, osmolar gap is less than 10 is normal if it is more than 10 or more than 20 we will suspect patient had taken any osmotically active substances okay. in patients with uh, if there is we had no any undiagnosed patient with coma or patient if taken is methanol ethylene glycol or ethanol Uh, with ionic metabolic acidosis uh, we use this osmolar gap mm. to know that patient is taken or otherwise undiagnosed patient in coma or uh, conditions you can take osmolar gap sir in this patient osmolar gap is uh, four sir mm. uh, that is because uh, patient had taken uh, uh, ethylene glycol at uh, 8:30 pm on uh, 8 april and patient reaching our hospital on uh, 9th mm. so the osmolar gap is uh, increased while in the initial period of intake of the alcohol mm. that is ethylene glycol that is osmotically active substance uh, that causes uh, unmeasured uh, osmotically active substance causes osmolar gap high but uh, when it becomes metabolized it will form a of uh, uh, lactate like substance like glycoxylate lactate oxalates that causes uh, high anion gap metabolic acidosis mm-hmm. so initially osmolar gap will increase when it metabolite form the osmolar gap will decrease and the anion gap will increase that's why in this patient vbg showing lactate is 10.8 so two reasons why like one one reason is uh, like time is the uh, time fact. second thing is if Form- the patient is already taken alcohol oh. knowingly if suppose he has taken uh, this toxin along with alcohol 
normal alcohol mm-hmm. then also the metabolism will not act uh, occur like what is given in the textbooks mm-hmm. so we don't know whether he has taken or not they may not tell mm-hmm. okay oh, they mix with uh, this mm-hmm. and alcohol and take that's why in this patient osmolar gap becomes uh, normal and the uh, uh, metabolites will increase okay then we can find uh, lactate gap uh, lactate gap it is the lactate gap is uh, because uh, these metabolites of ethylene glycol is similar and structurally similar to our serum lactate mm. so uh, point of care machines uh, cannot distinguish between the uh, which lactate is it okay. so in our point of care machine also lactate is 10.4 and serum lactate is uh, much more accurate mm. so the difference between the point of care lactate and serum lactate is the uh, lactate gap okay so uh, our uh, point of care is 10 and uh, uh, lab is 2 uh, uh, 2 sir okay so that is a, there is a gap gap is sir Mm, then in this patient we uh, treat with uh, uh, so formipasol uh, is a formipasol was not uh, given because uh, of the cost of the cost medicine of the medicine uh, and the availability available of medicine okay. so we move with uh, so yes ecs thing will be uh, oral ethanol sir mm, oral ethanol iv ethanol it is very difficult to get and uh, that preparation we don't have at mm. present we can prepare it if we have a good pharmacology department can easily prepare it but it takes time okay oral ethanol approximately uh, 120 ml hmm. we given for this patient okay then after uh, uh, then other uh, cofactors we can give in this patient like uh, after the aldehyde dehydrogenase formation of glycolic acid then in our body this glycolic acid divided into uh, glycine by the enzyme pyridoxine hmm. so we can give cofact like pyridoxine injection pyridoxine 100 mg iv once daily injection pyridoxine is available injection tablet is available 40 mg tablets are available vitamin b6 hmm. we can give some uh, then uh, then also we can give uh, thymine also in the thymine also convert this into uh, alpha hydroxy uh, beta keto something hmm. so thymine also you can give 100 mg iv once daily but it is is a chronic alcohol you can give 500 mg to uh thymine 500 mg also to mm, dilator cardiomyopathy very 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 to prevent what neuronal injury what is that eh vernicase vernicase so when you are giving a lot of alcohol even even uh, sorry alcohol or dextrose there is a chance of sudden depletion mm. of thymine in a, in an ex, in a patient who is already having thymine deficiency so it is better to give high dose of uh, thymine in this patient like 500 mg tid that is to prevent the vernicase uh, encephalopathy that also we can give sir mm. then we can give uh, other tox alcohol toxicity we can give uh, folinic acid also okay folinic acid and folic acid almost same mm-hmm. only thing is the other one is active form of the folinic Fol- a- folic, folic acid, acid that acts very fast okay um, so then after 2 uh, hours we will take uh, another uh, vbg vbg showing uh, ph is uh, de- uh, decreasing that uh, initially 7.32 become uh, less than 7.2 so uh, as per algorithm we will move on with uh, dialysis, dialysis because ethylene uh, glycol is a uh, dialysable toxin okay mm, uh, then we dialysis the patient uh, one cycle of dialysis uh, then ph becomes better it becomes most sorry. of these patient require only one or two sessions of dialysis mm-hmm. they may not require long term dialysis mm-hmm. uh, what are the dialysable toxins you know uh, ethylene glycol uh, methanol uh, all toxic alcohols to- toxic alcohols phenobarbital mm-hmm. uh, lithium uh, sodium valproate uh, then mm, arbitrates arbitrary you already mm-hmm. told okay mm, after one cycle of dialysis patient becomes better and ph become uh, 7.35 to 7.4 uh, mm-hmm. on uh, followed by vbg if ph is uh, persistently low what will happen to your body pH um, is persistently low. Low acidosis uh, causes cirrhosis. Okay, what will happen to your cardiac? Uh, cardiac. Arrest, arrest. Okay. Cardiac problem is the most 
prominent problem because of the acidosis okay. and and this patient uh, with the dialysis uh, then ph is less than 7.25 with bicarbonate is uh, more than 20 it is also an indication for we can give sodium bicarbonate mm. Uh, sodium bicarbonate is uh, sodium bicarbonate will it uh, reduce the problem or uh, it is only, only help you to prevent the cardiac, cardiac problem uh, just only increase the bicarbonate it only increases the bicarbonate corrects uh, partially your uh, acidosis it will help you to prevent cardiac problems mm -hmm. it will not uh, like uh, protect the patient from all other complications of uh, acidosis okay. uh, 1 to 2 milli equivalent what are the adverse effects of uh, bicarbonate in a patient mm -hmm. like uh, this yeah. patient this patient is also already have uh, uh, respiratory rate is 28 patient is tachypneic mm. so we again give bicarbonate mm. then product is again carbon dioxide mm. so patient will Hypo to hypoxemia can worsen then fatigability okay then what okay. else what else sodium bicarbonate what are the other co problems it can produce which an emergency medicine doctor should know. If you push bicarbonate, which electrolyte will be uh, sudden? Potassium. Uh, potassium. Patient can develop sudden hypokalemia. Mm -hmm. It is one of the most common uh, adverse effects mm -hmm. of uh, heavy dose of bicarbonate. Ha heart, what will happen? Heart. What will happen to patients who is already having cardiac failure? What happens? Sodium you are giving. Mm. What happens to heart? Contraction. Contraction increases. If you give more salt in a patient who is having cardiac failure, mm. what fluid or volume expansion and a patient will go to cardiac mm. failure. So these things you should keep in mind. Hypokalemia, you should avoid giving a pushing of uh, bicarbonate. Cardiac failure, you have to be very careful. All these things even uh, severe uh, respiratory acidosis also you should be very careful. Okay. And the sodium bicarbonate, other action is it alkalines the urine and it will okay. help to uh, excrete the okay. uh, metabolites. And that's okay. Anything else you want to talk about uh, this toxin? What happened to the patient afterwards? After dialysis, patient followed okay. by VBDs are normal. So if we are not able to treat the patient with uh, drugs or uh, your alcohol, better to take dialysis. Mm. Because the, if the patient uh, develops cardiac arrest, then it will, the situation will be worse. Mm. So it is always better to dialyze the patient faster uh, when you try for all this uh, medication which is not available. Mm. Okay. Anything else you want to add? Nothing. Okay. Thank you.